In the most recent patch, Magic and Hidden Blade got pretty drastic changes that make the item usable for a lot more guards. And still, we're not seeing it that much. And that's despite Magic and Hidden Blade currently dealing more damage than intended, which we'll of course talk about. So, what is up with that and should we be using it more? Ahoy, my name is Duke Sloth and today we're talking about Mannequin Hidden Blade as well as Mannequin Scepter by extension. We begin with the changes from the patch. Previously, Hidden Blade had basic attack power. That is removed and now instead the item provides 60 physical power and 90 magical power. Additionally, the bonus damage of the passive was increased from 15 to 20% of the target's current health, and this is physical damage. This is the part that is currently bugged, we'll talk about that a little bit later. First, a quick look at Mannequin Hidden Blade's other stats, it has 30 physical protection, 5 damage reduction, and also slows enemies hit by the initial effect by 20% for 5 seconds. When hitting multiple targets, contrary to what some other people have claimed, it doesn't seem to prioritize the highest health target. I can't really tell you what exactly it prioritizes, but from what I was able to find by testing around with Scylla's different abilities in jungle practice, it actually seems to usually prioritize the target furthest to the left, which makes absolutely no sense to me, but this is only when you're hitting multiple enemies with an AoE anyways. The passive has a cooldown of 5 seconds and will only activate if you've not dealt or taken damage in the last 5 seconds, which makes it somewhat situational because if you have to get in the middle of the fight and you get poked first, that can deactivate the passive. The damaging passive effect applies to guards, jungle monsters and jungle bosses, but can also be removed by minions while not applying to them. Therefore my first very obvious thought from an assassin's player's perspective, we get to the others later, was using this on guards that have global ultimates that crash from the sky so they can ensure that they are out of combat when the passive procs, or guards that have a very in and out combat style and utilize things like stealth in order to not get hit first. So before we even get into other scenarios, I wanted to take a look here at how this actually performs in those situations where you slam down with your ultimate. And for that we take the original slammer being Thor. The build that I tried was Warrior Tame, Crusher, Arendite, Heartseeker, Hydra's Lament, and then first of all I wanted to try Mannequin Hidden Blade versus Titan's Bane. And then I also wanted to know what happens if we combine Titan's Bane and Mannequin Hidden Blade, but instead leave out Heartseeker. The first thing worth noting in that context is that Titan's Bane's passive does not amplify the damage from Mannequin Hidden Blade. The penetration on the item itself will, but the part that amplifies your ability will not apply to Mannequin Hidden Blade. Now, I was interested in all the bonus damage here, so I used the ultimate and then used a basic attack on the target being a squishy level 20 Odin with no extra protections. For the first test, I also subtracted the basic attack damage itself, so we're only looking at the bonus damage, so only the Hydra's bonus damage is left here. The difference between these three was actually pretty significant. When building Mannequin Hidden Blade, our total damage was 1025. When building Titan's Bane, the damage was only 852. And when leaving out Heartseeker, the damage was 1038. So actually leaving Heartseeker out and including both Titan's Bane and Mannequin Hidden Blade gives us a better result here. But not significantly better because if we were to do a longer combo then obviously Heartseeker would get additional procs from additional abilities and therefore would at least even out in damage if not come out on top. But the important thing to take away here is that against a squishy Mannequin Hidden Blade will do significantly more damage than Titan's Bane. Now what if we do the same scenario with a target with 200 protections? In this case I actually included the full Hydra's plus basic attack damage, figured it doesn't really make much of a difference so leave it out anyways. The damage results here look a little bit different. 591 damage from Mannequin Hidden Blade, 594 damage for Titan's Bane and 644 damage for Titan's Bane and Mannequin Hidden Blade but no Heartseeker. In this scenario Heartseeker would have a harder time keeping up in damage because the extra penetration that Titan's Bane provides means that it'll give you more overall damage in many situations. That said, for both Mannequin Hidden Blade as well as Heartseeker, there is an issue here, and that is that you can't change the health values of the Odin bots in jungle practice. So if we were to fight a higher health target, which is likely if someone has that many protections, then those would also deal more damage. 
So realistically, in many scenarios, Titan's Bane would still end up last, or at least not have significant leverage, which is very very interesting considering it's basically the OG anti-tank item. Looking at both these comparisons, we can also see that the damage increase from Mannequin is by far the highest of all effects that are applied to the enemy. For example, in the first scenario with the Squishy, it deals 283 damage, whereas the next highest damage value here would be Hydra's bonus damage with 106, which requires you to attack cancel, or would be Erendite with 89. Not really all too impressive compared to the extra damage that Mannequin gives us here. Now you may look at these numbers and say, hey, hang on a second, you're doing this calculation based on the fact that the enemy has full health at the start, and that is why this is so strong, because Mannequin Hidden Blade works with the current health of the target. And that is where the current bug comes in. It seems that Mannequin Hidden Blade is not actually scaling with the current health of the target, but rather with the maximum health, even though there seem to be some variations and sometimes it deals a little bit more or less damage. Therefore, even against a low health target, you can expect to deal relatively high damage channels with this. That in itself honestly sounds a little bit broken, so keep that in mind, we'll get back to that later. Now, if you really want to get a lot out of Mannequin Hidden Blade, then you likely want to proc it multiple times. And I had a look at some assassins, because I wanted to see how this can even be utilized well, and I ran into one big problem. Dealing damage doesn't allow you to reactivate Mannequin and Blade until that runs out. And there are a lot of guards in the Assassin category that have some sort of damage over time. Arachne has her spiders and her one. Bastet has her bleed effect, number two. Kamazot has his dot. Daji has multiple dots in her kit. Set has a big AoE tick effect, which is not technically a dot, but still applies the same way. And then even Loki, who I thought would be a great user for this item, actually has multiple problems in that regard. He's got damage over time on his one, and his two also activates this. That is great on one hand if you want to proc it from range on an enemy, because that actually works, but then after that you're also in a situation where you can't reproc it for ages as long as any of the enemies touches the decoy at any point while it's active. And there could be something as simple as a minion running past it. And even other assassins have abilities that make this more annoying. Think for example Pelé's 1 where the projectiles come back a little bit later. Think Susano's 3 where that sticks to the target for a while. So there are very very few guards where I would say this really feels effective in the assassin category. And then you also want to subtract the basic attacking guards, because for them the benefits of this item are really not worth investing into it, especially over Eye and Protector of the Jungle. After all that, there's really just a handful left, maybe a Willish, maybe Naja, Thor, Thanatos, those are the ones that I was primarily looking at. I wanted to try some others as well, like Sir for example. But here is the next problem that I ran into in that very context, and that is the Tier 1, Mannequin Scepter. The first problem with it stems from the fact that, for some reason, Mannequin Hidden Blade was originally designed for basic attackers, and Mannequin Scepter still is. It provides you with extra basic attack damage, it provides you with extra basic attack damage as a dot against jungle camps, and that's basically all the item is with some extra protections. Most of the guards that utilize Mannequin Hidden Blade well do not work well with Mannequin Scepter, because they are primarily heavily ability damage focused guards, who don't really want too much to do with basic attack damage in early game. But the problems don't end there. Vonny pointed out to me on Twitter that some people in ranked are actually currently trying to run blue stone in jungle in order to have more damage output through that in later stages. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound like the best idea. I've tried it before and generally speaking your damage with it is just too low, even though this was before it got some of the damage buffs. But my main issue with it was obviously the lack of sustain or faster jungle clear. And I knew that Mannequin Scepter doesn't have the best sustain either, but I wanted to figure out how much that really is. So I did a bit of a scenario where I clear the solo side of the jungle, just the normal camps that are on your side, and wanted to see how long that takes. So if you do that very quickly, very efficiently, uh, that'll take around 32 seconds at the point of the game that I was looking at. In that time frame, you would clear 9 creeps, and I very generously assumed that you would get mannequin procs on six of them. Because in order to get a mannequin proc, you have to basic attack the target and then kill them while the dot is still applied to them. If you play a little bit of jungle, then you know that most camps aren't necessarily cleared by basic attacks with a dot applied. Sometimes you will just kill a target with a basic attack before the dot applies, uh, often you will just kill them with abilities. So six procs is already very generous. 
6 procs of 15 health and mana would restore in 90 health and mana being restored. Based on the 32 seconds that it takes to clear, that would mean that we're looking at 14.1 HP5 and MP5. The reality, however, is very different. In that very scenario, I had to help solo lane after that, because as a jungler, typically you have some more things to do outside of just running around in the jungle and clearing. That led to the whole process actually taking significantly longer until I reached the point where I was attacking the next camp and would have gotten sustain again. It actually took 93 seconds and keep in mind I started counting from the point where I was starting to fight the first camp. That would result in a total of 4.8 HP5 and MP5. Now the truth is likely somewhere in between, sometimes you won't have that many fights, sometimes you will be able to clear relatively quickly but most of the time there will be situations where you have to be around a lane for a while where you maybe help clear a lane for a wave where you do a gang where you do a rotation that maybe doesn't work out to an enemy camp or something and all of those situations take away time where you would be getting sustained from manic scepter and then you also have to basic attack the target when you kill them which slows down the secure sometimes even especially if you're invading and now look at bluestone on the other hand it simply provides 10 hp5 and 10 mp5 on average, especially if you are alone lane sometimes, that is more than Manic Inceptor. Your clear will probably be a tiny bit slower, but having more survivability can offset that, and you go into a much more reliable mid-game especially. Bluestone Brooch as an upgrade is also not significantly worse than Manic Inceptor Blade, it just doesn't have as much front-loaded burst and it doesn't have this reset potential. And I want to make this clear, I am not advocating for running Bluestone in the jungle, you do what you want to do. I just want to use this to demonstrate just how bad Manic Scepter is. I played many games trying to make it work on different characters in the jungle and it almost always felt awful for easily the first 10 levels if not more. At some point you kind of just forget that you have the item. The game is just a complete uphill battle until level 20 until you reach Manic Hidden Blade. And therefore, the fact that it can currently proc at max HP or at low HP the same way it doesn't even feel like an issue, it just feels like it's almost a fair reward for this atrocious journey that you have to that point. The only jungler that I actually found enjoyable with this item so far is Thanatos because he has the sustain to make this work and he can utilize the basic attack damage and all the extra damage just to beat down on a target a little bit more while utilizing his high base damage values. There are some others with the same potential, like I said for example Naja, but overall for the vast majority it just feels really really bad. So what do you do when you have a technically strong item that can't be used very well by the guards you're trying to use it on? You try and break it by using it on other guards. You may remember that I already did this with Persephone via boot start, which I think is still really really fun to do and very much possible, but there are some other guards that I had in mind. One of them is most certainly Ao Kuang, who's always been a decent user of this, though I would feel that he is usually better off with other options. But guards that I think are really interesting with this item are guards with AoE basics. Erlang Shen, for example, can be kind of used with this, even though I don't know if I would prefer it over I once again. But there's one guard where this is even more put to an extreme, and that is the Morrigan. Because the Morrigan has a basic attack with an AoE effect that allows her to apply this to multiple targets, and this can be used in lane or in the jungle. And here are the damage values that she can put out with this. We're looking at a total of 1502 damage in a burst combo with a bursty build, just using the 1 and 2 in a basic attack. That is pretty spicy if you ask me, and the really cool thing for the Morgan is that she gets very easy resets of this, because she can just get away in stealth and she doesn't have any additional effects that linger on the enemy, unless your 2 wasn't proc before and gets proc'd while you're in stealth. I definitely found her the most fun to use with this, but it was still pain. When playing her in jungle, I still ran into huge sustain issues, and when playing her in lane, I realized that while Mannequin in its original form at the beginning of the season was maybe a relatively strong pick on her, it doesn't really feel good for laning anymore, and typically somebody with Conduit Gem or Sense of Time will just outpressure you, and both of these items also have great upgrades. So while it's a cool idea on paper, I found it hard to justify. The other day, FineOK actually uploaded a video where he tried this on Ram, going a relatively high power build and trying to one-shot enemies, and honestly, I think that is the direction that the item is going into becoming a meme build item for ADCs. So as a whole, as cool as Mannequin Hidden Blade is, and if you can get in another mode without going through the early stages with Mannequin Scepter, then go for it. I think in its current state, with Mannequin Scepter kind of being attached to it as the primary condition, 
it's not really worth building for the vast majority of gods, with one notable exception being Thanatos, maybe more. What would need to happen is some sort of change to Mannequin Scepter that makes it more accessible for more guards, which again is strange in the first place. I don't know why this is a basic attack item when Eye of the Jungle is already a basic attack item. The jungler items are still completely messy in many regards. And honestly I would not be surprised if in the long run Mannequin Hidden Blade will get some restrictions as to who can build it, maybe melee only or something. It's gonna be complicated with some mages in there because Ao Kuang technically should have the option to use it as well and if you restrict it from magical characters that wouldn't really work so it's going to be a bit complicated for Hyrus to fully figure that one out but either way something needs to be done about this and I hope that the mid-season patch generally looks at jungle items as a whole because there are a lot of weird things going on there at the moment. We're talking about some interesting build changes for other roles very soon so if you want to see that click like and subscribe or I will go to my garage, hide in the corner, stare at my home gym and contemplate if it's harder for me to find the time to work out or for you to find the like button. Thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. That's that Nick Walker, Drain Brennan, Lenta25 Green, Zelaria, Zed the Undead, Nevitz Jr., Rawas, Angel, Zeferoli, and everyone else you see here.